Hey guys, welcome back to a new biology resumption video. So today we are going to attempt the Cambridge IGCSE Biology Paper 6 Alternative to Practical, the October-November 2023 series, Paper 6, Variant 1. So is there any questions, uh, you can post in the comment section. I will answer as soon as possible. Okay, let's start with the first question. So they give you the emperor penguins are large birds found in Antarctica where temperatures can be very low. Fairy penguins are small birds that live in Australasia where temperatures are much warmer. The body temperature of both species of penguin is maintained at approximately 38 degrees. A student investigated the rate of heat loss from a penguin with a large body compared with a penguin with a small body. They used a 250cm cube beaker to represent the emperor penguin and a large test tube to represent the fairy penguin. The student uses this method below. So just have a read through the methods they have shown. Uh, because they might tell you and hint you something that you might need to answer for the questions. Okay, so figure 1.1 shows the note the student made about the result for the first four minutes. So they're asking you to use the results that has been provided and then below they ask you to show the thermometer and record the temperature then to draw the result and the table. So prepare a table and record the result shown in figure 1.1 and figure 1.2 to an appropriate number of decimal places. So this is what I have done. Okay, I think I forgot to put, if you want to remain the same significant, significant figures, put all point zero. Okay, so this is how the graph will look like. Okay, part two, the rate of heat loss can be calculated using the equation. Rate of heat loss equals change in temperature over time. Using the results, calculate the rate of heat loss in beaker A and the rate of heat loss in test tube B during the first 5 minutes of the investigation. So this time, technically, all right, has given you the solution for this. For the change in temperature, you will get it from basically your results actually. So take from the highest to the lowest, highest for the test tube B to the lowest of test tube B and then divide it. You get 6.8 and 8.8. .8 and your unit must be 6.4 degrees per minute 8.8 .8 degrees per minute all right part three suggests the effect of penguin body size on the rate of heat loss so of course the larger the surface area or the larger the size of the penguin the lower rate the heat loss would be b part one identify the independent variable in this investigation the size of the container Okay, part two, identify one variable that should be kept constant in this investigation, the starting temperature of the water. C part one, cubes of agar jelly can be used as model cells. Agar jelly cubes are colorless and can be stained pink with an indicator. When placed in an acid solution, the acid diffuses into the agar jelly cubes and the pink color starts to disappear. When the acid has reached to the center of the agar jelly cube, the agar is completely colorless. This is shown in figure 1.3. Plan an investigation to determine the effect of temperature on the rate of diffusion in model cells. So I will use the same method. I don't really care. So uh, run away. All right. SRA. Mm. So in this investigation, three different temperatures of 30 degrees, 40 degrees, and 50 degrees are used for the acid. Huh? So cut the pink agar jelly cubes into dimensions of 1 cm to 1 cm using a knife. Add the slices of cubes into the acid which is placed on the thermostatically controlled water bath. After that, record the time taken to become colorless. Throughout the investigation, answer the type of agar, the volume of acid is remained the same. The safety precaution is while using the knife and remember to cut away from the hands to prevent any injuries and lastly repeat the investigation two to three times so this is six marks so this should be a quite simple one especially with the keyword effect of temperature we always state at least two to three different temperatures being used in this investigation and then you also provide the method of how do you maintain the water is by using a thermostatically controlled water bath and the rest of it is just pretty much the same and rate of diffusion they want you to use time as your um, dv the amount how fast the cube is able to become colorless all right 
Part 2. The length of the side of a cube of an agar jelly is 1 cm. Calculate the surface area to volume ratio of this cube. Okay, there's a bit of a trickiness in this question, but actually it's maths. So if I draw a cube, right, okay, there are six faces actually. Let's visualize. Huh? Okay, there's one, there is two, there is three, there is four, and five, and six. All right, top. So there are six faces, so the surface area will be six. And the volume they say is each is one centimeter. So you assume that one centimeter is all in this cube. The height, the width, and the length is also one centimeter. So the volume is one. So the answer is six to one. 2a. Figure 2.1 is the photograph of a lizard. Line CD represents the length of the lizard. Measure the length of the line CD on figure 2.1. So the line of CD is actually 100 millimeter. Calculate the actual length of the lizard using the formula and your measurement. So keep your answer in 3SFR and show your working. So I use IM formula where I take 100 divided by 0 0.6, I get 166.66. They want in three significant figures, I change to 167. That's your answer. B. Figure 2.2 is a photomicrograph of lizard blood cells. And this is the human blood cells. They want to ask you to state two ways of the lizard blood cells shown in figure 2.2 are different from the human blood cells shown in figure 2.3. So what I found is that in lizards, they do not have any white blood cell. But here there is a white blood cell for human. Lizard blood cells are much larger in size. You can see the sizes of these and between the sizes of the red blood cell is much bigger in size. Okay. And part 2, figure 2.4 shows one white blood cell. Okay, yeah, so this one. Draw a large diagram of the white blood cell shown in figure 2.4. So this is a rough sketch from me. Okay, so what are the marking requirements for you is just to outline, make sure it's a single clear line with no shading, at least 41 millimeter in diameter, a small lobe, okay, uh, to the bottom right of the side of the upper section is also drawn. And it's all this must, must be drawn. And thin line joining lobes on both sides. Lah. Make sure the line is thin. Alright. Okay. Part C. Hemoglobin is a protein found in human red blood cells. Hemoglobin carries oxygen. Athletes from a low altitude, higher above sea level location, train at higher altitude in order to temporarily increase their hemoglobin levels. Scientists study how long the increase lasted. One of the athletes returned to the low altitude location. So table 2.1 shows the result of the study. So identify the dependent variable of this investment. So they want dependent, which is actually just the y-axis actually, okay? Part 2. Using the data in table 2.1, plot a line graph on the grid to show the effect of returning to low altitude on the mean mass of hemoglobin per athlete. So just use all the results from here and then to make a graph. So the graph will just look like this, lah. have suitable uh, units, your axis also must be added and then a suitable line okay, must be drawn. So for but typically in biology line graphs, do note that you just connect the lines and you just look really really nice it's on its own. For bio, this is how line graph should be drawn. You cannot draw a best of, um, best of line fit, best of fit line in bio graph because you can see if you draw a best fit line, it is not going to look really nice and you feel felt that all points are just out of it's become anomalous like that but actually it's not so just connect all the lines okay all the axes i mean so part three use your graph to estimate the mean mass of hemoglobin per athlete 17 days after returning to low altitude indicate on the graph how you obtain your estimate so 17 days it's about here and then here it touches this point which is about 641 grams Part D. Scientists investigated the effect of different amounts of carbohydrate in the diet on the length of time an athlete can continue to exercise until exhausted. The results of this investigation are shown. So the exercise time until exhaustion is the dependent variable and the amount of carbohydrate in the diet. So they want you to state the conclusion. So the conclusion from here is this. Okay, so the more carbohydrate is in the diet, the more amount of exercise can be done. Okay. Part 2. The scientists carefully selected athletes for the three groups in their study. It was important that the data from the three groups were comparable. Describe two variables that the scientists should have considered when selecting athletes. 
gender, medical history, that could be uh, diet, your age, mass, uh, fat to muscle ratio, sports discipline, um, lifestyle qualified, maybe like do they drink uh, alcohol, do they smoke, do they take drugs or anything, okay? Last part, starch is broken down into reducing sugars. Describe the method you will use to test for the presence of reducing sugar. So add Benedict solution and heat it up to 70 to 80 degrees, two marks. Part two, state the region used to test for the presence of starch. Very simple, iodine solution. Okay, so this is the end of the video. Uh, it shouldn't be really difficult. Honestly, if you want to score this paper, you must practice a lot. The pattern is about the same. Okay, so practice your graph drawing, practice your specimen drawing also. Uh, do a bit more of this kind of IV, DV question, especially the planning investigation that worth six marks and you should be fine with it. Okay, so thank you so much for watching this video. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.